Hello and welcome back. Now that we are aware of our agenda, let's begin with some basics about streaming. Today we are going to cover some of the basics about Spark streaming. We will understand how structured streaming works. We will see some basics about structured streaming, which is input sources, how to process data, when to trigger, and what are the output sources available with Spark. Now, before we start, you need to know one thing. It is not necessary that in order to write a streaming application, you only need to learn Spark. You can write a streaming application using Python as well. But there is a benefit with Spark that it helps us with the variety of data it can handle and the volume of data it can handle. Plus, it provides us the analytical abilities that is inbuilt within Spark. Also, Spark Structured Streaming is an abstraction of Spark Core APIs. Thus, you have a benefit of using the same Spark framework. So, without any delay, let's begin. Now, before we can begin, it's very important to understand the difference between batch and stream processing. Now, in case of batch processing, we process a big bulk amount of data altogether. So, this is our data and the whole data will get processed at a scheduled interval. And that interval can be hourly, weekly, maybe daily or in case it can be monthly or annually. But in streaming, we process small amount of data continuously and that too on real time. And this is why this is also known as real time streaming. Now, in case of batch streaming, we have latency in data. When we talk about latency, it means the data will be delivered after some time. So, since we have a scheduled interval of run, so the data is delayed at the output side. But in case of streaming source, we have a continuous input and continuous output. So, let's take an example for batch processing. Consider Amazon. It collects all the orders that it has captured in its OLTP system and sends it to its OLAP system in a daily night job. But in case of streaming, you can understand example, for example, a fraud analytics. Once you make a purchase with a card, immediately the data is being sent to an AI system to analyze if that transaction is genuine or a fraud. So that is the case of real-time streaming. Again, there are many more purpose for real-time streaming. Example, consider a case where a medical machine is running and it is collecting data to analyze over the data on real-time and provide the output to the doctors. So you can understand the criticality of that scenario. There are many more differences between batch and streaming processing. Now, both of them are important at their respective places. So, it is very important to distinguish when you need a batch processing and when you need a streaming processing. Now, let's understand how Spark streaming works. Consider you have a streaming input. Now, that streaming input can be anything. It can be a Kafka source or it can be a file that is being regularly placed into a location. Okay, once that data is available, the main part that Spark streaming plays is breaks down the data into micro batches. Now, why does Spark breaks it into micro batches? The reason is Spark is able to perform the same computation on the data after making it in multiple batches. The same data frame queries would be ran for each of the batch and that would be done by the Spark engine. And once that batch is processed, similarly, the processed batch output would be written or would be sent to the output location where we are sending, displaying or writing our output streaming data. Now, if you understand it correctly, so the streaming data is continuously broken down into micro batches for processing and each batch is being processed individually by the Spark engine. And this Spark engine runs the same data frame code that you have written on the data frame label. Once you are able to write a data frame code for a batch processing, it's very easy to convert the same code for streaming. Now, the magic behind it is Spark continuously appends the incremental data that you are getting from the streaming source in form of batches and it appends the data under your data frame incrementally. And this incremental data is being processed in batches by the same code that has been written for that data frame. This data frame is called unbounded data frame, which acts as an input data frame for your job and you get the output continuously from your code running on that same data frame. So to understand, let's take an example. Consider this word count problem. So we are using a NCAT terminal in order to input data. Now we are writing words that Spark will count and will display the output in our terminal. It's a very simple program. So consider the very first second you wrote cat dog and dog dog. The input to the unbounded table you can see for the first second. Now Spark runs the data frame queries and counts the cat as one and dog as three. It provides the output to the terminal. In the very next second you write owl and cat. Same thing, you can see the data being appended in the bottom of that unbounded table. Again, Spark does the computation and provides you with the output. On the third second, you put two more inputs for dog and owl. You can see both of them being appended on the bottom. 
and now you can see data being analytically processed and being sent to the output console. Now, if you understand, this whole thing is happening in four steps. So, if you see this whole flow, we have first the input, which is our what. So, what is the data that is being ingested? So, we are ingesting the data from the terminal using ncat command. Okay. Now, when is the data being inputted? So, we are processing the data every second. So, on the first second, the third second and the second second, we process the data. So, this is our when. And the third one is how. We are doing the data in complete mode. This might sound confusing, but we will discuss all the modes one by one. For now, you just need to know complete mode means every time the data will be displayed completely. It will be overwritten on the terminal. And the fourth one is where, which is the output, which is in our case is the terminal. So now you understand the four concepts that we will discuss simultaneously in the upcoming sessions, which is what, when, how and where. And this four are the basic concept for any streaming job in Spark. Now, you can find this example in Spark documentation. It is well documented and available for everyone. If you are still unsure what we are doing right now, please wait till we start the coding session. This will all start making sense when we put down our code and start working with streaming data. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.